Have you ever asked somebody, how you doing? And they say, another day, another dollar. Same old, same old. Versus somebody who seems to be having everything going right in their life. They are living the dream. Money's flowing their way. And you ask them, how you doing? They're like, dog, so many awesome things are happening in my life. So in this episode, I want to unpack why the one reason why millionaires manifest success and money according to one biblical principle in this episode of the seven figure scripture series starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Was fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Guy home office here in the Chicago land area. And I'm excited to bring this episode of the Seven Figure Scripture Series, referencing another book I've read in my journey to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Many of you also aspiring to also become a first generation cash flow millionaire. This is a book written by William G. Bliss. I picked this up in the late 2000s. It's called Leadership Lessons from the Book. And it seems like uh, Bill is a uh, executive coach. He's also talking about a lot of leadership principles that he's also extracted from the Bible in his journey. And a lot of things I agreed with uh, in his book. And so I want to share with you the one biblical principle that will help you manifest money, success, wealth, and prosperity to give God the glory and the shine that he deserves as you manifest your multi-million dollar vision, dreams, and goals. So let's talk about that. A couple of things here. I wonder if you go about life, ask yourself a couple of things. Number one, what do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? And what type of experiences and accomplishments in your life do you aim for? Because let me bring it down to you like this. The reason why millionaires manifest money, success, wealth, prosperity, and they jump out of bed every morning. And these guys and gals that you just cannot stop. And by the way, not all millionaires are created equal either. But when the millionaire who establishes one biblical principle... And there's something different about this individual. There's something very different about this person. You're inspired by them. You're excited by them. Outside of just the material success, outside of just the status and the influence they have, but more importantly, what they stand for is because there's one biblical principle called, here we go, vision. That's right. Let's talk about vision here real quick. What does scripture say about having vision? It mentions here in Proverbs, again, written by King Solomon, who's the wisest and richest king who ever lived. He says here in Proverbs, which can be found in the Bible, under chapter 29, verse 18, he says this, when there is no vision, the people perish. Let me read that one time. Without vision, the people perish. You perish, the people that you love and care about perish, the people you surround yourself perish, your community perish, perishes, why? Because there is no vision. You know, last week, I was with my mentor, Patrick Ben David. We're in Boca Raton. I'm sorry. We're in Palm Beach at the Breakers Hotel. You know, and anything about the Breakers Hotel, every president in the United States the last 100 years has stayed at this hotel. So millionaires go play around in Vegas, but billionaires go to the Breakers Hotel to create wealth. This is where billionaires hang out. And we're going over the sales leadership summit and the room was filled with other entrepreneurs. And I can tell those that had vision with their business versus those that did not simply by how they articulate their business. And the interesting thing about this group of entrepreneurs and other groups of entrepreneurs I've interacted with in the past is just by following certain things. Listen, United States of America, the world of free enterprise, entrepreneurship, and the right type of capitalism, you can make money here. I'm going to encourage you one more time with that saying. You can make money here. There's so many different ways. If you just Google on YouTube how to make money, how to get wealth, how to get rich, how to make 100000 how to make a million dollars, you will find topics upon topics upon topics how to get ahead, at least financially. But not all people that get ahead financially are all created equal. Why? Because there's one thing. Vision. And you can sense people that have vision. You can sense people 
that are wired differently because it's not just for the meantime it's just not for the now it's for now and in the future lots of times people are so short-sighted with their vision they think about right now how to pay the current bills and by the way the person that was a master at that was me and because i was so worried about leaving the military so single dad of three kids and i had raised them by the way my daughter's just turned 20 years old last sunday god bless my babies melani and soledad but my oldest son is 25 my twin girls are now 20. we have a younger son at 10 years old and now two years old but as a single parent of three kids i had a lot of worry about paying the bills putting a roof over the head and my vision was temporary the conversation about me just paying the bills and making rent and making sure things are temporarily paid for so that I can push off and defer problems for the next week, two weeks, a month, it was all I was thinking about. The last thing I was thinking about was down the road. So that's why we encourage you, if you're a subscriber to the YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad, that we want you to help think bigger and broad because we want to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore one day you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire by having vision. Why? Because I was in this room of entrepreneurs and many other rooms of similar type of situation, is a lot of people can get involved in business and be just good at sales. That's what I was good at for my first 11 years. I sold insurance, I sold insurance, I sold financial products and services, sales, sales, sales. Sell real estate, real estate, real estate. Sell Bitcoin, sell Forex, sell whatever, gold, silver, whatever. Sell pain management services, stem cells, surgical services, chiropractic services, you know, commercial relocation, whatever. You can mean sales, sales, sales. That's singular. That's individual. But a person that has vision elevates to another level, which I consider becoming a leader. So not only a salesperson, but you're a sales leader because the sales leader then becomes a builder of men and women. They become a builder of people. Why? Because that's vision. And I'm always intrigued about my conversation with a lot of entrepreneurs. I ask them, give me the vision for your business. What's the vision for your business? What do you see in your business? And if it's just about product and how interesting their widget is, and they all can nerd out about what that you know, a conversation is about what they offer without understanding why or what the vision is of why this product or service exists in the marketplace, I can tell very quickly this person's gonna make a lot of money, but it's not gonna last. You can be an accidental millionaire, you can be a first generation cash flow millionaire, sure, anybody can get lucky, but if you want this to compound, you want this to grow, it just can't be about individual sales or just sales of the product or service. You gotta create leadership with your efforts because it's about building departments, building people, and more importantly, building a company, building a financial ministry, for lack of a better term for many of you, that believe that your business is a blessing to other people, not just for yourself individually, because that's also te thinking temporarily, but my people perish for a lack of vision. The second part of having a vision is become a visionary. Kind of like I was mentioning before, a vision serves other people, not just self-serving. And it's not, again, just about being a leader. It's about being a builder. Let's look here into what Jesus' prayer was for his people when he knew his days were soon to be over with. So let's read here. What Jesus did here in John chapter 13, verse 7, and he's doing something that's low of the low of the low. He was conducting an act amongst his disciples that was worse than being a slave. That was worse than some of the lowest things in that society would be doing, which was the act of washing somebody's feet. Let's check this out in John chapter 13, verse 7. He says here, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you'll never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Unless you allow me to serve you, you don't have anything to do with me and what I stand for in terms of my vision. Verse 9 says, then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And then Jesus said, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him and that was why he said not everyone was clean. 
So Jesus was conducting an act here to serve his men, to show an act of servanthood, servant leadership. And you realize that just because you take a bath doesn't mean you're ultimately clean because you're not willing to get down in the trench and serve others. Because not just being a leader is becoming a servant and builder of other people around you. And we're looking at the third part about vision here is vision will be opposed because a visionary is a current liar because that vision hasn't manifested itself. Like for some of you, some of you say, you know, most of your friends and family, I'm going to be a first generation cash flow manager. I'm going to pay off all my debt. I'm going to be financially free. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. For sure you are because you're being, being a visionary. And that's why people are opposing you. But if you're tapped into something that's eternal, not just temporary, then a lot of people will challenge that. And the biggest thing you got to do is continue to push back to as well. Don't be bullied thinking that your vision is something that you cannot manifest. Because if you read scripture, if you read the Bible, biblical principles are that you can manifest a vision that God has given you, a dream that God has given you, a purpose that God has given you that a lot of people may or may not understand. That's why God specifically and originally gave it to you. Do not expect other people to understand your vision and allow them to see currently right now temporarily what you see, because even though you see it, don't expect other people to see it too as well. Again, my CEO, my mentor of our, our firm, he's known as a visionary. He talks about things that a lot of people like, how can you think about this? How can you see things like this? Because he has tapped into the eternal aspects of his vision, not just the temporary aspects of the vision. And the crazy part about this vision, to hang around with visionary type people. Some people call this prophetic that if they choose to do the work, guess what happens? They end up manifesting that vision into a reality. I remember my wife, uh, when we first got started in business together, and she's like, babe, you know, man, you know, she's making you know, money selling hospital beds for uh, a medical company. And even though she was making decent money at the time as a single mom, and we're, we're, we're a blended family, I was a single dad, she was a single mom, and she was having, you know, success at her, sales jobs, selling medical equipment and, and hospital beds. But to our mentor casted her a vision that, hey, based on things that you know and that your current skills and your current work, work ethic, you can see yourself at 15,000 a month, 20,000 a month, 30,000 a month in income. More, it's like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. And I saw this all happening. That our mentor was casting a vision of what can happen if you choose to realign those skills and abilities into something that has a better payout or opportunity in the industry that pays better, that you can manifest more wealth if you apply those same values and principles to something else. And next thing you know, $20,000 a month. Next thing you know, $30,000. Next thing you know, $40,000. Next thing you know, $50,000 a month. My wife's vision is blown away because these things are actually happening. The associations that are happening, the people that get invited to our events, like Magic Johnson and the late, great Kobe Bryant and former President George W. Bush, Kevin Hart, and we got Mike Tyson coming to our event. All these different folks that are attending our event because there's a vision laid out that we're going to capture the attention of A-list celebrities and or influencers because of the magic of what we're doing in terms of establishing a business in our industry that serves the needs of the multicultural middle class has been overlooked and underserved, and that has been our vision. And because that has been our vision, guess what now? We started working towards it. We got opposed, got some pushback, not only from external sources, but also internal sources. Sometimes the people that we serve don't want to be helped. Isn't that crazy? And that's also biblical. How many times have we read here in the Bible when, 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 uh, when God's people was being led out of Egypt in an exodus? Now you guys know the story. God parted the Red Sea. People walked through the Red Sea. Egyptian armies coming after them to kill them. Red Sea comes back together, drowns out the Egyptian army. And even then, in the wilderness, people were free. People weren't enslaved anymore. People are still saying, I'd rather go back to being a slave because at least I have a little house and a little bit of food. Because right now, in freedom, we got to fend for ourselves. Isn't that amazing? So just because you think you're doing something right, your vision may be exposed, not just necessarily externally, 
but internally, but that doesn't mean your vision is wrong. That doesn't mean your opposition should keep you from manifesting that vision. Again, God gave you that vision. It's not for us to understand. It's not for anybody else to process and understand. But it's between you and God. I encourage you, if you are facing opposition, you're watching this video right now, guess what? It's probably a good thing that you're getting opposition because pressure and resistance creates strength. And the best type of strength that's created is that spiritual, internal strength that God gives you to manifest the dreams and goals and desires that God has placed on your heart and your soul and your spirit to manifest. Some practical application here. Number one, if you say, okay, man, how do I manifest it? How do I get it done? I see some of these experiences. So number one, establish your core values and principles. And if you want a biblical reference to this, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 13. It reads like this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a good future. So God has got some big things in store for you. And it's not necessarily for you to doubt and say, okay, I'm going to buy more into my doubt and fear versus my vision and my faith. So take some time and write down things that you stand for as a company, as a family, as a ministry, as a, as a, as a nonprofit, for profit, whatever it is. What do you stand for? And uh, something that we cast into our children's vision all the time is what our last name stands for. We had a birthday celebration with them. I wrote them a letter and I said, listen, babes, here's what you got to remember what our family stands for. Let me share it with you. It's our acronym called WIGID, W-I-G-I-D, and stands for this. W stands for wisdom. Seek this. It's more than just knowledge. It's knowledge plus and times experience. I stands for initiative. Don't wait for anyone or anything to do something for you. G stands for gratitude. It's never about what you don't have. Appreciate and love what you do. I stands for integrity. Always do the right thing, especially when no one is watching. D, dreamer. Life is not what it is, but what you can make it and benefit you and others. Is a quick reminder to my daughters and my family what our Sapala family last name stands for. From a company level, we took a retreat with our CEO. We flew to an island in Georgia called Jekyll Island. And uh, in the room where the laws and the concepts of the Federal Reserve Bank was established, uh, we did our own retreat about what our company's values, morals, and principles stood for. And the first one I'll share with you, not all of them, but the first one is we come through with our word. We do what we say. So take some time here. Figure out what your values and principles stand for, and you'll be shocked at what you discover. Number two, some practicality here. Recruit, hire, and reinforce the right conversations with the right people. Recruit people to your cause, your movement, your company, your ministry, your nonprofit. Hire the right people to help administer and, uh, and run the operations to expand what it is that your vision is calling you to do. So therefore, you can reinforce the activity, the character, the results of what you are setting out to do. Let's take a look at what the Bible here says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, and it reads like this. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. I'll continue reading here in verse 4. The, the Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Let me continue reading on number 5. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure this, this will not go unpunished. And let's go on to number 6. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, a man avoids evil. Man, check out how, pro how profound the uh, writings here of King Solomon was in terms of committing his plans to the honor of God in manifestation of creating the golden age for the people of God during that time. So let's take a look at what Scripture says here in, in John, in the New Testament, John chapter 17, verse 9. Again, a very trying time 
in the life of Jesus as he knew his days were about to come to an end. Jesus was praying for his disciples and he says here in verse 9, he's talking to God, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. Verse 10, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. And here's, let's finish off with 11. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still here in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Wow. Amazing what Jesus was praying for his disciples, his people, his ministry. Are you doing the same to manifest your vision? Are you not only praying for yourself, that God not only blesses you, but more importantly, blesses the work that you're doing to serve other people, to bless other people, to pray for them, uplift them, protect them, guard them, and help them also create opportunities that they can receive and manifest in their own, in their own time. Number three, establish goals and accountability. Write these on some practicality. Establish goals and accountability. Sounds very basic, but let's unpack this real quick. Jesus in his ministry always spoke and cast his vision. In reading through Bill Bliss's book, Jesus also, and also referencing with the Bible, Jesus also met opposition, yet he responded. He was armed with understanding scripture. He was armed by becoming a technical expert in his field, becoming a student of his business to manifest that vision. So therefore, when people oppose him, he wasn't just being bullied and kicked around. Number three, he demonstrated appreciation. He demonstrated gratitude. He demonstrated that, wow, this is actually happening in a small advance of the small victories compounded into great victories because if you can appreciate the least, you could be blessed with the most. So with that being said, I'm just curious for you, if you're still watching this video, I'm just curious. I shared with you some of our family values and principles. I'm curious to what your values and principles are. Jot down three values and principles. Let's start this exercise. What does your values and your principles stand for? Put it in the comment section below. I'm curious to know what a seven figure squad community thinks about what they stand for in terms of values and morals and principles. So after you get done doing that, consider watching these two videos right here. Let me reference you to this one, which is how to make your dreams come true. And the second video here is one biblical hack that will help you manifest your vision and if the Lord sees it fit your way, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, according to the Bible. So again, I'm curious to our seven figure squad community, your thoughts, your questions, your follow-ups. Again, drop it in the comment section below. And again, we always read your comments. We always read what you've got to say. And our next episode, we're going to be getting back to you with some of our questions and answers from my end, relaying them back to you in a future episode here coming soon. So that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy from the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.